Hi, I'm Cindy Ross, the Restoration Manager for Friends of the Rouge. Uh, Friends of the Rouge is a nonprofit organization that has been working in the city of Detroit for many years now um, to teach Detroiters how to protect and improve our water resources in the community. Um, and one of the way, easiest ways to do that is to disconnect your home's downspouts. And so I'm here today to teach you how to do that. Hello, my name is Irma Leapart. I work for the Sierra Club, Michigan Chapter, and their Great Lakes program. I'm here with our partner, Friends of the Rouge, Land and Water Works Coalition through the Detroit Future Cities, because we know how important it is to protect our waterways. We need to protect our water quality so that it's, so that it's swimmable, drinkable, and fishable. So we're here today to show you how to disconnect your downspout, and we hope that you'll do it to protect our water quality that we rely on for our drinking water. So the first tool you're gonna need is a hacksaw or, um, or even a sawzaw. If you have uh, steel um, downspouts, you're gonna need something a little bit stronger than this to muscle through. Uh, but most of our homes just have aluminum downspouts and so this will do the job just fine. It's cheap um, and easy to use. So if you do have steel downspouts, you might need something a little bit stronger than that hacksaw. And this is just a simple little sawzaw tool. Uh, the blade on this one is a little bit bent, um, but uh, these are still pretty affordable and are really handy to have around the house and can cut through almost anything. So this, if you have um, those steel downspouts, you might want to invest in this. So once you've made your cut, you're gonna to need to direct that water to flow um, away from the home. And you need to think about where you want that water to flow. Uh, you don't wanna flow, have that water, you need to keep that water on your own property. So you, you definitely wanna make sure that it's not flowing onto your neighbor's property. Um, we don't wanna cause any um, water issues for somebody else. And so uh, the easy solution to do that is to use an elbow that you're gonna to connect to your cut down spout and extend out into your yard. And so if you, depending on the direction that you need it to flow, there's an A elbow and a B elbow. Um, so uh, cheap, easy, easy to find these, any, any hardware store. Um, but you just need to take a look, take stock of what you have before you start working so you know what you need. This is a piece of downspout, uh, they come you can buy a whole section like I have here, which is a 10 foot section, um, and cut this in half to extend two downspouts. The rule of thumb is you wanna get that water, at least five, extend the water at least five feet away from the foundation of your home. So this is perfect. I can cut it in half and I have two five foot sections. You can purchase smaller sections. They're just a little bit more expensive. So if you're only doing one downspout, you don't have to buy the whole thing, you can buy a smaller piece. Another thing that you're gonna need is a way to cap your sewer pipe once you've disconnected that downspout and removed the material. Um, you might wanna purchase a cap, something like this. Uh, they come in different sizes. This is a four inch, this is a three inch. Uh, depending on what you have, there is no one size fits all for this because the pipes are, are all different. Um, so if something like this will work, you would just cap that over your pipe and tighten this nut so that it fits nice and snug over your pipe. They do make uh, some wing nut caps that fit inside that you would then tighten and it, it expands outward to fill that pipe. Um, or I guess there is a sort of a one size fits all solution, which we often use and we will take chicken wire um, and newspaper and mix up a little bit of quick cement and just cap it off with that. And that will give you a nice solid seal that's permanent and nothing, no debris can get into your, um, into your sewer system that way. Once you have um, cut your downspout and chosen the elbow you're gonna use and the material to extend, um, you're just going to fasten everything together using um, these gutter screws that are already painted white so they'll match everything that you need. 
um, and either a screwdriver or I'm just gonna choose to use the, the cordless drill. So let's get started. So to get started, I'm gonna mark uh, my five foot length on my downspout. So now that we have our piece of downspout um, cut, we're gonna go ahead and get started on disconnecting the downspout from the house. So this is the downspout that we're going to disconnect from the sewer system on this home. And remember I mentioned that there are two elbows to direct that water to flow either forward or sideways. Um, this is the side of the home. The neighbor's property is on, it's to the right of me. We want to direct that water to stay on the property and we're going to use a side elbow to direct that water to flow toward the front yard. To get started, we want to measure um, at least nine inches above where the downspout is connected to the sewer pipe. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'm on this house, I'm going to mark it just a little bit higher. Uh, there's no real reason for that other than he's got a nice handy little dip in the, um, in the brick, which is going to make it really easy to cut all the way through this pipe. Um, so there, it, it, there's no necessarily uh, maximum cut, but there is a minimum. You want at least nine inches above that crock so that you ha maintain a slope to keep that water moving all the way through the system out of the downspout that you've extended. So now we're gonna start our cut. I've got the hacksaw. I've got my um, downspout marked and I'm just gonna go ahead and start chop, cutting away at that. There we there go. You go. So now that I've made the cut, we want to remove this piece from the down, from the sewer system. See how easy that was? It just popped right out. Um, see the crock here? Now this we want to fill. We'll do that as the last step, uh, but we don't want any dirt or debris to go down in that, in that crock, the sewer pipe. So now I'm going to fix the elbow to the downspout uh, using the screws, as I mentioned, the gutter screws. The important part here is that we have one end that's a little wider than the other end. You always want, uh, you don't want anything to obstruct water from flowing through the system. So you're gonna always take the wider part and put it over the existing part so that there's no, uh, nothing to catch any, um, any debris to prevent that water from flowing. So this is just gonna slide right over this. All right, now that we have that elbow on, we're gonna fasten it with our screws. So we talked about using uh, a piece of downspout, uh, cutting that in half for two um, extensions. And that truly is an easy solution. We've come into a little hiccup uh, because we need to keep the appropriate slope um, and it's not connecting quite how I want it to. And so the beauty of this flexible pipe is it's much more forgiving. You can use it anywhere um, really without any problems. Um, so I'm gonna switch from this downspout to the flex pipe just to make our lives a little bit easier. Um, we do wanna maintain, like I mentioned, uh, the, keeping the water five feet from the downspout, uh, from the foundation of the home. And so we're gonna switch it up to this just because uh, when we get to that distance, it's sort of a funny angle. Um, another option would be to cut this just a little bit shorter and adding a splash block at the bottom so that the water then can fan out. Um, because I don't have a splash block, and this is just so much easier. I'm switching to the flex pipe. So we've got the elbow on. I'm gonna go ahead and put the flex pipe over. Remember always this piece you're adding goes over the existing piece. Got 
that on there. Easy peasy. And that's all there is to it. So that's all there is to this. Uh, we've successfully disconnected the downspout, extended the water out into the yard. Now we're going to cap the sewer. And so Irma with Sierra Club is actually going to uh, go through that process with you. Hi, so now that we have the downspout disconnected and the extender placed onto it, our next step is to cap the storm drain. Now, Cindy mentioned how we could use the caps, like this is a four inch cap, but you'll notice as I try to put it on the cap that it's not fitting. So what, I, what I'm going to do as an alternative is I'll use plan B, which is to use the chicken wire and paper. And I'll show you how that works. And once I've put in the chicken wire and the paper, then I'll cover that with some quick dry cement. My first step is to try to make sure that the chicken wire that we've cut will actually is a proper size for fitting. And it appears that it is. So the next step is to crumple some newspaper, a crumpled newspaper, and fit it inside the chicken wire. And we'll take a little bit more, crumple that and put it there, and fit the wire around it. And this, the purpose of this is that when I put the cement, the quick dry cement over it, that cement will not go into the pipe. It'll stay and just cover the top layer. And that, so that protects it from debris. The paper will eventually disintegrate. And that's okay because by then the cement will be in place. So we'll fit this in with the paper. I like to make sure that it's relatively flat. See, I can put my hand there. And the next step then is to mix the cement and then I'll cover it using a spatula. Okay, so our next step is to mix the cement that we'll use to put over the chicken wire and the paper so that we have a permanent cover over that storm pipe. We wanna make sure that no rain, or debris can get down into that storm pipe. Our first step is to, I'll put some water in this cup. It's a little bit of trial and error. You'll see I'll mix some water, put some cement in. Next, I'll put, this is my mixing, my mixing bowl, and I'll put just a little bit of cement in there. Doesn't have to be a lot, the hole is not that big. Then I'll add the water and take uh, the stick and start mixing it. So I've added a little bit too much water, but that's okay. I'll pour some out in here and add some more cement. And I'll keep mixing until I come to a consistency that I think is appropriate. Okay, I think we're ready to put our first layer on and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we've got our cement mixed and let's apply it to the top. We'll just get it in there nice and thick and then spread it. A Little bit here. And there it is. Now we have a finished, disconnected downspout, a covered storm drain using chicken wire and newspaper and quick dry cement. We are happy to know that we have removed some storm water from going into our combined sewer system and we're protecting the storm drain from any water or any debris that may go into it. Mm -hmm.